Hello everybody, and today I want to talk to you about trees and uh, some parts of the things I'm going to talk about, just life in general, and some about photosynthesis, and some other biology stuff. And I'm learning these things from this book. As you see, I'm still reading it. The cartoons, the cartoon guide to biology. It's a very nice book if you think, uh, uh, if you try it and you like science. Uh, I think there's a whole series of uh, these cartoons, uh, cartoon guides to uh, whatever science subjects there are, and it's very fun. And also, it's not any old, uh, any old uh, knowledge. Giving cartoons, I think this this cartoon is rather packed packed with knowledge. The series of the cartoons, cartoon guides to stuff. This this these books are pa packed with knowledge, a lot of knowledge. And now let's start. Now. The first thing we are going to talk about is ATP. And now what ATP is, it is short for adenosine triphosphate, I think. I'm gonna put a little subtitle on the screen what, of what the spelling is. And now what ATP looks like is it looks a bit like this. Mm. There's some, um, not that complicated, but some mo molecular stuff over here. And then there are three, uh, three phosphates. What phosphates are is it is, uh, Wait, what was the uh, what was the thing in the periodic ta uh, table called? Uh, hydrogen, helium, then lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, everywhere, and nitrogen, all three D, air, and oxygen. So you can read them for following for it. Pretty, pretty teeth and neon to light up the sun. Sodium for salt, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphor, phosphorus. Yes. What phos what phosphate is 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 phosphorus and some oxygens near uh, oxygens attached to it. So in the book, it looks something like this, and then there's actually I think there were something like sticks attached to them, but now that's the phosphorus, and these are the oxygens. I think that's it, and and there's three of them. And there's three of them, and these phos phosphates don't like each other. So basically, it's like a set mouse trap. So if you if you give it a little push or something, something to activate it, it goes, it goes slam, and it releases energy. So basically, ATP is what cells use for energy. This is the energy source of cells, and basically, also how these work works is, let's say. There's an enzyme. This is an enzyme. Yes, very bad drawing. Now, what enzymes are, are proteins that do stuff. So, let's say there are molecules. Uh, let's try it near the enzyme. Uh, let's say there are molecules floating around, and the en this enzyme's job 
is to bind them together. So what the enzyme does is, I, is as I said, bind them together. And as I said, the enzyme, the protein that do, does stuff, this, uh, this binds them together. And where does it get the energy to bind them together? The ATP, of course. The ATP kicks the enzyme with the phosphate. The last phosphate uh, with the, la uh, the, uh, the ATP attaches the last phosphate in, uh, onto the enzyme and that releases energy from the ATP to the enzyme. That gives energy to the enzyme and now the enzyme has energy to do stuff. For this example, the bind the molecules. And now the ATP becomes ADP, which stands for adenosine diphosphate. Uh, basically, the first ATP, uh, if you think of the first ATP, the tri turned into a di, which means two in some sort of language, I think. I don't really know, but anyways, because there's two, you call it adenosine diphosphate. And now that I explain what ATP does, I'll explain how they are made. And as I said, the ATP is the energy source of cells. They are very important. And how do, uh, how do you make the ATP? You get it from glucose or sugar. Glucose is the most, uh, most smallest molecule that resembles sugar, I think, that makes up sugar. The smallest molecule that you can call sugar. If you taste it, you, uh, it would be sweet. And this glucose uh, looks a bit like, bam, editing magic. And it looks like this. C for carbon, H for hydrogen, O for oxygen. And I did not draw the hydrogens here because there are 12 of them and it would be a real hassle to draw all of them. And the hydrogen is just attached to all sorts of places. I think it's stuck onto every other atoms in here. And well, now this is what glucose looks like. The most fundamental fuel for living stuff, cells. And now a cell consumes glucose. Uh, wait, before that, I'll, uh, I'll tell you one, uh, one other thing. The reason why we need oxygen is to get this turned into, now, let's just write it over here. While we make ATP, we, uh, we use that glucose and turn it into carbon dioxide and water, like this. Uh, here is glucose and, and add six O2s into it. O2, the, uh, the oxygen we breathe. And then what happens is, Basically, this turns into uh, six carbon dioxide and six water molecules like that. I'm guessing you can work out how that becomes it. And now, as we turn, uh, turn uh, as we turn the, uh, turn glucose and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water, we produce ATP. And I'm now going to talk about how that works. Firstly, there is glycolysis. Glycolysis 
is the first level where that's the first level of making the glucose into ATP. Oh, and before we get into those all, uh, uh, get into all of those stuff, glucose is just providing the energy to make ATP. It doesn't become ATP with the molecules and stuff. No, it doesn't do that. It just provides the energy for ATP to be uh, ATP to be made, basically. Put, uh, basically attaching a phosphate written as PI onto ADP that needs energy and that energy glucose provides and now glycolysis first starts with glucose entering the cell in the empty, uh, empty part of the cell well, I guess not empty because glycolysis happens there. Uh, uh, glucose enters and then there are enzymes over there. The enzymes, uh, enzymes attack the glucose and then something, something happens to them and then, and then now there's Phosphates attached to them, and then, and then there's a lot of enzymes that uh, does this, and and then what happens is the glucose that has phosphates attached to it snaps into half by an en enzyme. The enzyme breaks the glucose, and so now you can see there's six carbon, but now the molecule looks like. A uh, three carbon molecule with a phosphate attached to it and another three carbon molecule with a phosphate attached to it. Now, then what happens is, uh, before we get to the next stage, two molecules, uh, uh, the two molecules over there are called GAP and DHAP and now the GAP part of it is oxidized by NA8 uh, NA uh, by NAD plus and what that means is the oxidizing part no oh, wait I'll just erase a few stuffs around here Um, now, what N, uh, what oxidizing is, in an oxygen atom, if you look at the oxygen atom, well, there's going to be the nucleus, a nucleus, I'm not going to draw the proton, uh, protons and neutrons in it, and there are electrons flow, uh, flying flying around it and a oxygen uh, and the oxygen's nucleus is quite strong compared to hydrogen and stuff so so the uh, so the oxygen in, uh, in water the hydrogen uh, the electrons on the hydrogen are more closer to the oxygen. I think I said this in another video. And so, yeah, basically the oxygen's nucleus's pulling force is quite strong. And so, when something oxidizes, their electron gets pulled into the oxygen a little bit. And we call that oxidizing. Uh, scientists call that oxidizing and for some reason they also call whatever it is if you pull ox uh, pull electrons out of it you call that oxidizing even if you don't use oxygen it's very confusing and 
Yeah, that's oxidizing. And what is Na uh, NAD plus? It's written like this. NAD plus is an ion. And this NAD plus, what it is, is as the book describes, a piggy bank to store electrons. As I said, the oxygen pulls the electrons. NADH can store two uh, can store two high energy electrons. So it's a uh, so it's a energy piggy bank, and the energy piggy bank oxidizes. Or in other words, steals electrons from the GAP, a molecule split from glucose. And it does that. And what does it mean? Now, the NAD plus has a lot of energy. Uh, the, uh, the NAD plus, oh, when NAD, NAD plus oxidizes something, steals two, uh, steals two electrons. It also steals a hydrogen, a, a, a piece of hydrogen atom. And then it also pulls a spare proton from around. And then, uh, so, but it doesn't get attached to that spare proton. It just leaves it hanging around. And now, you call the oxidized, the uh, the Na uh, the NAD plus that has stolen some electrons is now called NADH, and now yeah that's how it works. And now NADH has energy stored in the by the oxygen. And yeah, and now, as I said, the GAP is oxidized by NAD plus. A little bit of energy has been freed up by these. Uh, the uh, actually, only two uh, two electrons get stolen. So one of this uh, these guys, one of the the uh, NAD pluses. Now using that energy. The cell is able to. Uh, the cell is able to produce one extra ATP, and then the one extra ATP, uh, extra ATP has been produced, uh, pr produced, and then now we're left with the GAP with uh, a little bit modified, and as I said before. Uh, the glucose, when it has been modified by the uh, the first enzymes that has attacked the glucose, they put some phosphates on it, and then we split them. So now we have a GA a GAP in the other one, and those both uh, those both have one phosphates each, and now. The GAP here has that phosphate, and now we take that phosphate away. The one last phosphate, you take it away, and what you have got is pyruvate. And this pyruvate is uh, this pyruvate is now used for more ATP production. There. Uh, to this point, it's called glycolysis, and now we go on to the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle happens in the mitochondria, as you might know, as a powerhouse of the cell. If you know it, you know it. If you don't really have to know, know the. Anyways, and the video was getting getting quite long so we'll cut it here and make it a series so that was uh, this was our fir first episode talking about glycolysis in the next episode we'll talk about the mitochondria and and in the mitochondria 
the Krebs cycle and the uh, and there's the ATP synthase and a whole lot of things happens in there. So I hope you enjoyed and bye.